Good day and welcome. Today we continue our series on the wonder of creation. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing unto you, our Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Can we actually imagine nothing? No earth, no universe, just an unimaginable nothing. The nothing that existed before the creation. As described in the second verse of Genesis, now the earth was formless and empty. It didn't exist. And then to paraphrase Bill Bryson's book, A Short History of Nearly Everything, in a single blinding pulse, a moment of glory much too swift and expansive for any form of words, from nothing a universe begins. It's a place of the most wondrous and gratifying possibilities, and beautiful too. In the six days described in Genesis, from the absolute of nothing, there was the creation of the wonder of our universe. God saw all that he had made, and it was good. And to quote from Psalm 33, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. So from nothing, we get to the wonder described in Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth and their words to the end of the world. The wonder of all this, God's creation declares his glory. God has always been glorious, but when God created the universe and the earth, there was, amazingly, a whole new way of seeing and declaring the glory of God. Although all of creation declares God's glory, in Psalm 19, David focuses on the heavens because the heavens are the most universally visible of all God's works. David describes the skies as the work of God's hands. When we speak about creation, it's not just anyone's creation, it's God's creation. It is the work of His hands. And just as you always see something of the artists in their creative works, so you can see something of God in all of His creative works. The heavens acclaim and praise God through their beauty, through their complexity, through their incredible balance and order, even through their sheer size. But in these verses, David says even more, not only is there a revelation of God in creation, but God's testimony to himself in creation is unmistakable. First of all, it's a continuous testimony. We can see some of this in the tenses of the verbs David uses in verse 1. We really miss it in our English translations, but in the original Hebrew, they are all present participles, expressing continuous action. The heavens are declaring the glory of God. The skies are proclaiming the work of His hands. In other words, this is something they are doing unceasingly. Look also at how he describes his testimony in verse 2. He says this testimony takes place day after day, night after night. So whether the sun is shining by night, or by day, or the moon and the stars by night, whether we are enjoying a beautiful, calm, peaceful day, or we are in the middle of a powerful thunderstorm, there is never any time of day or night when God's creation is not declaring His glory. It's a continuous testimony. Not only that, it's also an abundant testimony. It would be one thing if this revelation of God was happening all the time, but, but as just a small trickle of, of testimony to God's glory. But look at the lavish words David uses to describe this testimony. He says, The sky has poured forth speech. And this word can be translated as pour forth. It's a word that means to bubble up and overflow literally to gush forth in an uncontrolled and uncontrollable manner. 
God was not stingy in creation. God has created colors and sounds and variety and wonders wherever we look. To quote, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Whether we look deep into the heavens with a telescope, or deep into the inner workings of the cell of a plant with a microscope, whether we look up, down, or all around, God's fingerprints are over all that we can see. God has provided an abundant testimony to himself and the wonder of his creation. God may be invisible to our eyes, but the creation does reveal some of God's qualities to us. The size and complexity of creation, especially as seen in the heavens, containing the sun, the planets, and the moon and the stars that show us God's eternal power. The beauty and order and design of creation show us God's divine nature. There is so much we can learn about God from just observing the intricate wonder of his creation. And so it's important that we spend time with God and his creation, watching the sun rise or set and the seasons turn, staring up in awe at the stars in the heavens, walking in nature away from the hustle and bustle of human activity, resting in the fields perhaps, and watching the streams and delighting in God's plants, flowers, animals, and creatures. All of these things teach us more about God and draw us to praise and to worship him in deeper and better ways. And in the midst of all this wonder, taken from Psalm 8, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings, that you care for them? From Genesis, the Lord formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. The creation of humankind in God's image. And from Psalm 139, For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. God, in his love for us, has made us his special creation, creatures to whom God can speak and who can respond to God. And who can respond to God. Think about that. Thank you for joining us. Take time to go out and enjoy God's creation and blessings, and keep safe. Amen. Thank you.